Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to the Scrap FX YouTube channel. Today we're going to be making some steampunk wall art using the Scrap FX new steampunk uh, chipboard pieces. So I'm starting out with some cardboard box that I scavenged off Christmas, Christmas present and I'm just tearing off some of the front cover using um, sort of random patterns and shapes to expose the corrugated um, effect of the cardboard. And now I'm using these uh, stone uh, stone effect pastes from Finnebear Art, which is I think a subsidiary of Prima Art, and they're in concrete, pumice, and sandstone. I think off the top of my head. So I'm just spreading on using a palette knife and making sure it's sort of got a textured effect and um, just patting my palette knife up and down just to get as much texture in here as possible. I don't mind that there's different um, colours because it's all going to be covered over in the end. So this is just to create a textured background so that when I gesso it you can get all those little divots and crescents, crevices and so on within the piece. It makes for a really interesting textured piece to add anything on top of. Now if you were a really patient person you would probably leave this to dry overnight. I'm not a very patient person so I'm using my heat gun on this to dry it off. Not necessarily to completely dry it but certainly so that the the top of the paste is stiff enough that I can put some gesso over the top. So just with a brush I'm applying gesso all over it fairly roughly making sure it goes into those crevices in the corrugated um, cardboard and making sure that everything's sort of got a coating. This ties everything together and you can sort of see it now come together. You've got that textured background with the crevices of the cardboard and so on but it makes it not look like a cardboard box anymore. Now while the gesso is still wet what I'm doing is pouring on some embossing powders. These are WOW embossing powders and I've got a verdigris one, a gold, and I'm just heating it up. And I'm using the wet gesso as my embossing ink, so to speak. Now, lots of people probably say don't heat acrylic paint. I don't mind doing it. It does add some bubbles. You can see it bubbling a little bit in the background. To me, that adds texture to the piece. If you're really concerned about it, let it dry, you can apply some embossing ink over the top and then add this layer. But I just like the randomness of just applying it straight onto the wet gesso. Now I'm working in a fairly well ventilated room anyway. If you're working in a really tiny room I would suggest have a fan or have a window open. Just because even just with embossing powder you are melting a plastic. And same with the acrylic gesso. Uh, once I've finished melting the first two layers, into the heated embossing uh, enamel I've put in a copper colour and now I'm just pressing a stamp in. The reason for that is it's going to indent into the embossing powder and leave a, again more texture. And also because the background wasn't completely dry, that actually um, indents into the texture paste and so on I put in the background. With my dirty gesso brush, I just put out some Night Dina Wakely paint and painted it on the background, quite watered down to get that sort of stone colour in the background. And then in the little bottle I've got there is again night paint with some flow medium in it. Now the Dina Wakely paints are a heavy bodied acrylic, but putting flow medium into it, it makes it into a fluid acrylic so that it will pour down the page like you can see there. and um, give you that beautiful effect. So now I'm using one of the new steampunk pieces from Scrap FX, and this is one of their latest releases and I'm using my Versamite embossing pad and embossing this piece with the verdigris. It's a beautiful um, colour and just by embossing your chipboard pieces makes them look amazing. To emboss I highly recommend using a Versamark ink pad, I find that's the stickiest ink but any embossing inks on the market will work the same. I also used some more of the cogs from uh, Scrap FX to um, and embossed them in gold, not gold, sorry, copper. And now I'm going in 
and putting some of the Inca Gold Wax in the background and onto the cogs and onto the chipboard pieces. By doing this, and particularly by having that really heavily textured background, the wax sort of sits on the top and gives you this beautiful shimmer and shine. Now to attach everything down, I'm using a heavy body gel medium and it's really sticky. It goes on opaque but it dries clear so even though you can sort of see some of the um, glue or some of the gel medium through the chipboard piece, when it dries, it dries clear. So now all I'm doing is just sort of going through and trying to work out where I'm going to glue pieces. I originally started gluing the pieces to that main chipboard piece but because everything was so fine it wasn't giving me enough to grab to so I've now changed to sort of work out where I was going to stick all my cogs and glue them directly onto the um, base board instead and this gives me certainly a lot more contact with um, the background and the glue that it, everything will stay where it's supposed to stay. So just going back and checking the placement each time I do it just to make sure that it's exactly where I want it to be and popping it down onto the page. Now again gel medium is a fantastic glue but it takes a little while to dry so um, working on a flat surface like this and just leaving it on a flat surface to dry is probably best. You can kind of speed up the process with a heat gun but even I just tend to glue things down and leave it to dry. I find that's the best. The good thing about the thick, using thick gel medium like this one is because it is so thick it's far less runny than um, normal glue so if you do tip it up just to check placement and so on it's less likely to slide down your piece than another even a softer gel medium so if you don't have some of that in your toolkit it's a really useful thing to have particularly when you're gluing down chipboard because it is by nature um, a cardboard and it is slightly absorbent it gets a really great grip onto the surface when you're trying to adhere things down so I'm just going through and finishing gluing everything down, making sure everything is where I want it to be, patting it down and just leaving it to dry. While I was doing this, I was thinking about what else I wanted to add to this page. I loved how it came down the background, but I wanted something else to add on to this piece. And this is one of the uh, ScrapFX transparencies. I said, um, it says uh, vision without action. I can't read it because the glare is directly on it, <laughs> is merely a dream. Action without um, action without something else. It's, it's a great quote anyway, sorry I apologise for that. And, but what I was finding was um, it didn't fit where I wanted it to fit. It's beautiful with all the different scripts on it, I really loved it but I was try really hard to try and fit it where I want it to go. So in the end what I decided to do is just to cut it into the parts and be able to put it onto my page like that. The next little hurdle I had was how was I going to adhere this onto my piece. Usually I would use uh, again gel medium or something like that but because it was gluing plastic on what has a tendency to happen is it doesn't completely dry and it stays cloudy. So I was really racking my brain on what I was going to do here and how I was going to, to glue it down. With this little piece here, it still didn't fit. So I cut off the top bit, vision and action, uh, vision with action, sorry, will change the world. So I decided to cut those into little pieces so I could then fit everything in. I'm just using a craft knife, um, a sharp scalpel to glue, uh, to cut everything. I personally find it easier to cut with a scalpel than I do with a pair of scissors. I get a straighter line. The ruler I'm using has a metal edge on it so you don't cut the plastic. So this is me trying to work out what I'm going to use to glue it down. In the end, as I was going through my collage drawers, I came across uh, a sheet of glue dots. Now it's not normal glue dots, it's actually like a sheet of mini, 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 mini glue dots. Um, all in one piece and you put down 
whatever you're going to glue down and it covers the entire back with adhesive. So I figured if I used that, um, it would kind of transfer a little bit of a pattern onto the background, but it's going to look like it's supposed to be there because it's across the whole piece. If I just use a glue dot, you would have had um, a dot at either end, it would have been really obvious. So this worked really, really well. And actually by gluing it down, particularly because the background of this piece is so textured, it hid the um, adhesive up to a point. If you look really closely, you can see it, but if it's hanging up on a wall, it's really sort of going to blend in with the background. Once I'd done that, I came across um, another chipboard piece from Scrap FX, which are these brilliant hashtags, and this one, I think it's called Attitude, and it's called Take a Risk. And looking at it now, I wish I'd put it back over where I had it. So, um, benefit of hindsight when you when you're looking at these videos, they're great because you can sort of go, oh, I wish I'd moved it there, or I wish I'd left it there. Now, to ink up the this piece of chipboard is really really fine. If I'd used my fingers to push it down, I had took a risk in bending it or breaking it. So what I did was laid it onto the Versamite pad and used an acrylic block to pr press it down into the. Versamite pad and that meant I've got an even pressure over the whole thing and I could emboss it and make sure that everything was covered. So I, I embossed the take a risk with the verdigris again to sort of tie in the um, main piece of chipboard with this take a risk at the bottom. So as I was doing that I was thinking I really like this, what am I going to do with it, how am I going to hang it? And I came across again in my collage bits and pieces, um, my old washi tape hanging system, which was a piece of dowel with two bulldog clips on it and an old necklace strung across it. I thought, oh, that necklace colour is the same colour as the pieces on here, so I'm going to use that. And I really love it. I love the sort of industrialness of the bulldogs to hang this piece. I like that it's got a bit of metal on the um, necklace piece and it just really worked for me. So as I was going through, I did come across some metal cogs that I had hanging around that are already pre-aged and pre-rusted. And when I laid them on my piece, I really liked how they looked. And it just added that extra little bit to that right-hand side that was looking a little bit bare. And it also sort of gave some more realism to the other bits and pieces, the faux cogs, I suppose, and the faux metallic. So I'm just gluing those down again with the um, heavy duty gel medium. I've also around the edges of my piece added some more um, Inca Gold Wax, which is a, a waxy gold paste that you rub over the top and it just picks up the top of the texture and highlights and it just makes the whole piece look finished. So this is my mixed media panel, uh, steampunk panel. Everything dries clear as you can see in these close-ups and you can see the texture in the background. It's just really, really rich. Looking closely here, you can sort of see that texture in the back of the um, transparencies as well. But from a distance, that really does blend in. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you look in the description box below, you will find the link to the blog post of this uh, project with all the uh, scrap effects pieces I've used as well. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.